what way is more dangerous than most people think? Being knocked unconscious. Lots of popular media makes it seem like a minor thing that an average person can shrug off after a short period. In reality, if you were ever knocked out, then you have suffered brain damage. It's possible there might not be any lasting effects, but it's a serious injury, and you 100% need to see a doctor if it ever happens to you. Deep cuts on your fingertips. They're called felons and can infect your bloodstream. Clean them out and if you see a red line traveling up your arm, get yourself to the ear immediately. My neighbor almost died from this when she cut her finger on her violin string. Remove my advice about changing tires. My main point was don't go under your car if the tires are off without a jack stand, but that should be obvious. Walking downstairs with your hands in your pockets. Never ever do it, especially not drunk. A fall down even one or two stairs with no hands to catch you can break your neck. I've seen a video of a man tripping and falling down four stairs, hitting the top of his head on the wall, and dying right there in the stairwell. Newts. Many newts, such as the rough-skinned newt, produce a toxin that is ten times more potent than cyanide. They're only dangerous if you handle them and then don't wash your hands afterward, or if you eat the newt. There have been multiple reports over the years of someone eating a newt as part of a hazing ritual for a college fraternity, and then dying. The toxin that some newts produce can kill you within 15 minutes, because the toxins block the sodium receptors in your nerves you, essentially stopping your brain from communicating with your heart. Scary stuff. If you handle a newt wash his hands. And never put a newt in your mouth or you will die. Rescuing a drowning person. Drowning people are completely panicked, with one goal which is to get to the air immediately, and they will climb onto people in their blind panic and fear with little to no thought, as long as they can keep their heads above water. There have been stories of young children drowning their older siblings and parents, as the kid climb on top of their parents' heads and submerge them underwater. Rescuing a drowning person is no joke, and if you yourself are a poor swimmer and or not trained in in-water rescue, do not attempt rescue. Your safety is the top priority. Instead, immediately call emergency services and try to either extend something out for the person to grab onto, like a pole noodle, pool net pole, branch, etc., or throw something that floats at the person for them to grab onto. A life jacket PFD is the best, but pool noodle, kickboard, floaties, open cooler sky lids work. If you are trained in in-water rescue, then the young should already know that if you don't need to get into the water, they don't. Remember call, reach, extend, throw, row, and swim, in that order. And always assess the conditions of the water before going in if you do. If the water is too murky, the current is too strong, or there are too many in-water hazards like logs or rocks again, don't attempt to rescue. It sounds horrific to think about, but always think of numero uno, and rescue teams would much rather only rescue one person than two people. If you do decide to jump in to attempt rescue, then you should always take something that floats with you, so you can hand it off to the drowned before they grab onto you. The ocean, both for swimming, surfing, etc. and for boating. It is 100% not just a big swimming pool or lake. Human beings are in a completely alien environment as soon as they step off the sand or dock, and our perceptions about how things ought to play out no longer matter. The ocean is completely indifferent to human reasoning, and even to human mortality. I'm teaching a good friend to sail right now, and he's naively ambitious as far as sailing long distances in a very small boat. I wasn't joking at all when I chided him by saying, you haven't been scared enough times yet. The reason I'm so conservative in and around the ocean is that I've developed a healthy, totally reasonable fear of it throughout my life. Anybody who isn't a little afraid of the ocean hasn't spent enough time around it. Source. Tug captain, lifelong surfer, and lifelong recreational sailor, please, if you're going out on a boat, make sure you at least have a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, a working knowledge of how to call for help on a VHF radio, an anchor to stop you from drifting into rocks if the engine fails, and PFDs for everyone. Situations you've never even imagined can arise so, so quickly on even a short outing. Crossing train tracks when a train is coming. People do it every day, so clearly don't realize how dangerous it is until they are hit by the train and are killed. This is one of those things you wouldn't expect on this list, but if people realized how dangerous it actually was, people wouldn't tempt their fate each day to save a few minutes. 
not going to the doctor when something is wrong. You are macho for not going, it doesn't make you more of a man. It makes you an idiot. If you live in America and don't have insurance, I'm not talking about you. We all know these people though, I'm not going to no damn doctor. I'm fine. I knew the guy who hadn't been to the doctor in 30 years. 30 years. Always bragged about it, never sick, blah blah blah. One day he goes to the doctor because he loses a shit ton of weight for no reason in the span of a month. Turns out he has so much cancer in his fucking body that he's a walking miracle. His stomach, colon, and lung, and it were in his lymph node. Doctors gave him a prognosis of like 4 months with aggressive treatment. He forgoes the treatment and died in a month. Go to the fucking doctor. Your best chance against cancer is early detection. Hell, that's with everything. If you wait too long it might be too late to do anything. Almost everything that today we get to take for granted as routine. Infections are easily treated right. Not with antibiotic resistant bacteria and or new viruses, anesthesiology and painkillers, incredible, but with fatal consequences, if mishandled, driving, looking up stats, or talking to the paramedics and other first responders with stories, trades jobs, if you aren't trained in that particular trade, upon all the required safety protocols, or in a situation where the company isn't as stringent as they could be, lots of people get hurt or worse, it is one of several reasons we have a day of remembrance for workers killed on the job. Childbirth modern medicine helps a lot, a lot. But there is a reason some cultures considered it like going into battle. Household repairs and cleaning supplies, I seem to remember that ladders, stairs, etc. resulted in a lot of accidents, and many children get poisoned from unsecured cleaners, adult safety and childproofing a home. As others have said, things under tension are heavy things that can drop from a height. One of the reasons logging is so dangerous, food safety, our food usually has been kept safe throughout its journey to us, but we find out from food recalls, how quickly hundreds or thousands can get sick when regulations aren't followed. Or, not that we think it is in any way safe, but likely many of us on Reddit haven't had direct experience with just how horrible it can be. That is why videos and documentaries are still so captivating on the subject, because the danger was more extreme than we often grasped at first. Currently relevant, disruptions to farms. If farms don't get planted watered weeded harvested on time, eventually, someone may not get to eat, basically. We have tried over time to reduce the everyday things that are dangerous to a start with more or less success, and sometimes, with unintended side effects, like the big one, carbon emissions equals are more dangerous than most people think. Hypothermia if your clothes get soaked and you can't dry out and warm up, temps in the 50s F, 13 C, can kill you. This is how people going on day hikes get killed. Something happens and they can't get back to their car lodge. The weather changes and they can't find shelter and they get wet. They die of exposure. My scoutmaster taught us, boys, the hard way by teaching us the importance of planning. He made us traverse a stream, and while our packs didn't get wet because we were carrying them above our heads, we did get soaked up to about our chest in cool water. The temperature was around 55 F that day, which is not that cold and kind of nice. After we got to the other side, you would not believe how quickly we got cold, especially if there is no cover from the wind, and within a few minutes, our hands became useless and we couldn't start a fire. The shivering got so bad, it was incapacitating. The cold set in fast. We learned that day that we needed to make sure our clothes remained dry, even if that means stripping down butt naked to cross the stream, and that we needed to have fire already made, and a smoldering ember ready to go along with tinder, so that we could get a fire going quickly, that is if we didn't have matches or fire steel. So, he taught us that we should cross the stream, put our dry clothes back on, start a fire to warm up and dry out, and immediately start working on the shelter. Hard lessons don't leave you, even after 30 years. Lost memories. Forgetfulness in general, really. You might think that, even with some lapses or a somewhat bad memory, you're fine, after all, it's just small stuff, anyone can remind you of it. That's how you get careless, and the chance of it being an issue becomes just another lost thought, a drift without ever crossing your mind again. You see, it might appear to be small stuff only, but here's a little spoiler. Forgetfulness is anything but picky. Since losing apparently worthless stuff isn't something you keep in mind, the very issue will stay beneath suspicion. Now all that needs to happen is for you to forget about someone or something you cannot afford to, and by the time you become aware that you did well, shit has well and truly hit the fan and dried up on the walls. Good luck ever fixing that. 
and good luck getting to trust your own memory again. One thing people don't really think about as dangerous is fishing. When I was younger, I remember that my dad's friend took me fishing with his son. I remember that, my dad's friend's son, tried to huck a piece of bait to the end of the string. But he never realized that the hook was sharp, so when he put it on, he got the hook through his finger, and it came out the other side of his finger. It is clear as day and I think I was traumatized by it. I'm only 19 and it happened when I was 7. Sorry for the long post by the way. COVID-19 here in North Texas, the majority of people seem to think it is over now, but the number of new daily cases and active cases is increasing. There are no vaccines, no good treatment, and people who have had severe cases take months to recover. Some end up with permanent damage to the lungs and other organs. But sure, people are petitioning for regular high school graduation ceremonies, refusing to wear masks, etc. Not sure if this count but chicken pox. Heard so many people dismiss the vaccine as they believe it to be a harmless childhood disease, we all go through, making the vaccine pointless in their minds. But chickenpox hides in the spinal cord for years and can resurface as shingles. Shingles can cause chronic pain, neuralgia, and in worst case scenarios, meningitis, stroke, or encephalitis. Illiteracy. Even if you don't like reading books, most sites are still text-based. Imagine not being able to do most things because you can't read the directions. It's like having a lifetime of IKEA furniture setups at every decision, after being dropped into another country where you don't speak the language. And without the formative thinking skills that develop from our time reading we cannot completely think critically. Most people think, but are wrong based on flawed logic and anecdotal, biased, experiences. If you think that's bad, imagine no one thinking at all. Frying food. A friend came over, and I and my roommates made dinner W her buffalo chicken and, for me, the vegetarian, buffalo cauliflower. We pretty much just dropped the chicken and cauliflower in big Olay pots of oil. It was fun and delicious. The friend that come over happens to work in a restaurant, and she told the head chef there about what an amazing day she'd had, making buffalo chicken and cauliflower with us. Well, he flipped out, saying frying food without the proper equipment, thermometer, fat, etc., is super dangerous. We could have easily set the house on fire. Admittedly, when our friend told us this, me and my roommates kind of just shrugged our shoulders. Since, we've made fried ice cream, to stones, yucca fries, and sweet potato fries, and the house hasn't burned down yet. It's still dangerous though, we're just reckless. Being in the water near dams. Going over a dam whether you are in a boat, a tube, or body surfing. Even low 3-foot dams can cause issues. Dams in the US have been built straight across the water. When the water flows over a dam, it is immediately pushed to the bottom of the riverbed. The water going deep has now created a hole where there should be water near the top. So, water that was downstream comes rushing back upstream to the dam. If you go over the dam, you will sink to the bottom and surface, and then get pushed back towards where the water is falling over the dam again. That water pushes you under, again, you float downstream a tiny bit, and then once again get sucked back toward the dam to get pushed under again. This can happen even if you are in a sealed kayak or wearing a PFD. The best way to get out if you are cycling through like that is to curl up into a bowl, and try to get as low down in the water as possible. There is a chance you may float far enough underwater to break free of the cycle. And remember if you are playing below a dam that the water will be rushing from downstream back up toward the dam remember that cycle of downstream water filling in when the water flowing over the dam goes deep. Well, you can start below the dam, end up in the water that is going back upstream, and get sucked into that same cycle. So be aware of dams. Don't kayak over them. Be careful if you are below one. Having a false penicillin allergy on your healthcare profile if you are unsure, please ask. 10% of people report a penicillin allergy, but less 1% of those people actually have one. Having a penicillin allergy takes away a huge class of really good antibiotics that can save you during infections. When you report an allergy, doctors and hospitals have to prescribe you oftentimes other antibiotics that don't work as well and or are unnecessarily powerful killing many bacteria that do not need to be killed. 
This has been shown to have more antibiotic-induced diarrhea, less infection control, more C. difficile, deadly diarrhea, more antibiotic resistance, and higher overall mortality. Please ask your healthcare provider if you are unsure. You can always Google allergy symptoms, rash, throat swelling, etc. There is also a way to test if you are allergic as well. Please consider. Anxiety, specifically being stuck in a fight-or-flight response. My mom had intense anxiety for years, her body was stuck in a fight-or-flight response. That amount of non-stop adrenaline and her never seeking help for being emotionally detached and bottling things up, has messed up her body physically. Your mental health is so important your body will deteriorate if you don't take care of it. Relax, maybe give meditation a try.